Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donfred, Madam Kossor. Happy birthday from the stage. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure uh, for me to be here today, to be invited by the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy and uh, to have a, an opportunity to uh, share with you some uh, of my thoughts. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, as a relationship uh, between the culture and the defense. It is not by accident, uh, because uh, as invited by Institute for Cultural uh, Diplomacy and former defense minister, I will try to, to, to say a few words uh, uh, about uh, these two terms, these two topics. Uh, at the first glance, uh, uh, it seems that no clear link between the two, the, these two functions of society. Moreover, uh, the first reflex uh, uh, would be to separate them, uh, uh, each other, uh, because uh, it seems that they have a, a completely contrary meanings. Uh, cultural deals with the good, with uh, clean, with nice, while the defense is uh, uh, associated with the war and in war, these attributes at least missing. This is because uh, culture is usually defined through the arts. While it is not incorrect, uh, it should be noted that culture is much broader than the concept of art. First of all, we all live, as uh, Leonardo I. Prado says, uh, in a certain cultural framework. Uh, in uh, addition to these uh, general settings, culture is closely linked uh, with the ultimate goal of defense, which is security, and security which involves uh, maintaining and uh, protecting of well-being for the members of society. And well-being of a society is defined by its members or by the culture itself. Let's try to simplify. Culture evokes the best from us. It tends to a universal feeling of safety that is at the state level enabled by the defense. Our cultural framework which we honor today is Europe. In security terms, Croatia supports this framework uh, and formally belongs to him through its membership to NATO and the European Union. However, uh, the question is, does the existence uh, of these two integration uh, means that there is a European strategic culture as such. We should not go too far to the history. Uh, this would be kept to the fact uh, uh, that, the, uh, that uh, 2003 European security culture was first time mentioned in an official document. Uh, it was, of course, uh, European security strategy. Strategy, strategy which uh, explicitly advocates the creation of strategic culture that uh, for the first time clearly includes the ability for timely, for uh, quick and when necessary rapid uh, intervention uh, of military forces uh, from European states. Strategy says that we must be more active in promoting the objectives by using the full set of instruments uh, for crisis management and conflict prevention. These are, of course, instruments uh, of politics, diplomacy, military, and commercial and development activities. Ten years later, it is legitimate to ask ourselves, uh, are we now closer to achieving the strategic goal of uh, creation of European strategic culture? Or are we perhaps further than we were a whole a decade ago? European culture from that period uh, uh, was marked by a very important processes. It was encompassed by a wide spectrum of issues from the war in Iraq to the major financial crisis. The processes which were sometimes more, sometimes less affirmative for the development of continental strategic culture, but in any case, they gave to it uh, a certain connotation of duality. However, differences in looking to possible access to, to the global crisis and uh, 
uh, international hotspots did not exclude the reality of joint action. For example, uh, the controversy over the appointment of Catherine Ashton did not prevent the European Union to get its first foreign minister and even to start creating its own diplomatic service. What is going on these days regarding new uh, uh, appointment as a, of Mr. Juncker as a, a European Commission president uh, sounds uh, uh, similar. Separate uh, Anglo-French uh, uh, agreement on defense co cooperation has failed to diminish the importance uh, and the need for NATO, nor these two countries with the biggest defense budgets in Europe uh, stopped their own engagement in NATO and European Union. After all, today hardly anyone remembers it. The financial crisis that began in 2008 and which effects are still present, especially for us in Croatia, seriously uh, descended defense budget of the nation states. In fact, uh, the state defense area is one of the biggest victim of the austerity, austerity measures uh, which was implied from European uh, Commission, but uh, also from the European Council. Uh, in a period of uh, several years, the defense budgets of European states uh, have been decreased uh, for uh, several billion uh, of uh, euros. Uh, and uh, tens of billions of euros, and Croatia, unfortunately, is in the same trend. Our defense budget has declined from the period of 2011 for more than 100 million euros. But the fact that uh, after such a major crisis, which is comparable to that of 1929, no European country has attempted to seize the moment to, to promote uh, their particular interest is very significant. This points to an important uh, uh, difference between two major crises, and that is, speaking on Europe, uh, uh, that although perhaps insufficient and vulnerable, there is a European strategic culture. This is reflected in another important segment, specifically the members of NATO and the EU member states are trying to find way out from this state of play, uh, introducing uh, or launching projects with <coughs> multinational dimension. NATO has a policy of smart defense, uh, uh, which, uh, with the aim of creating a new way of thinking about building a modern defense capabilities. And this approach also support uh, another strategic uh, dimension that is that's of uh, existent, existence, of possible existence of transatlantic security culture. In the European Union, a similar process takes place under the name of pooling and sharing capabilities, the concept uh, that refers to initiatives and projects aimed at filling the gap in European defense capabilities, which logically contributes to the further development of the European security culture. It is extremely important to emphasize that uh, pooling and sharing uh, and the European security culture mutually reinforce each other. Even more, they are faithfully linked. Achievement of the objectives in uh, one is impossible without uh, achieving goals in the other, in another realm. On the other hand, uh, the reluctance of member states uh, in acceptance uh, of reducing their autonomy presents or prevents the, co the consistent uh, collection and sharing uh, capacity that weakens European strategic culture. Here we are talking about the end goals. However, we have to be aware that this is a process and it is difficult to estimate how long it will take. Probably no one today can precisely point when the European Union will have a fully integrated system of uh, remote guidance capability for aircrafts or air refueling of aircrafts or a uh, new generation of satellite communication. But in the meantime, it is important some nations will go through this process easier and some will face with more serious challenges. 
uh, speaking uh, on smaller and poorer countries like Croatia, unfortunately, uh, will be under particular uh, pressure to drop some of uh, its military capabilities. The same applies to the ability of uh, our enterprises to participate in tomorrow's joint European defense market. I'm think, uh, talking about uh, the last conclusion of the December summit of European Union, which was devoted to the uh, future of European defense. For these reasons, it is important for governments to be more active in advocating their set of uh, interests and goals. They are those who have to show the bigger that uh, without, to, to the bigger states that without smaller states, there is also no European strategic culture and that they may well contribute to the concept of pooling and sharing. A group of German uh, authors cited four areas of strategic importance for the strategic European strategic culture. These are uh, the level of ambition in international security policy, the relationship uh, between the legislative framework uh, and the new security realities, foreign policy orientation, and the willingness to use military force. As a far uh, of uh, ambition in world politics, uh, it is obvious that a number of states today extend its activities uh, beyond their actual capabilities. This primarily, uh, primarily refers to the financial crisis as an obstacle. In terms of legislation, there is a visible distinction between the defense of national territory and the participation in the international missions. It is closely related to the voluntary torque uh, for participation in operations uh, and the search for the balance between domestic uh, constraints and international obligations as reflected in uh, the way of participation of soldiers in uh, international missions. Uh, increasingly, countries use uh, so-called caveats or different type of constraints uh, as a result of public opposition to the elementary participation in missions outside of the country. The enthusiasm if, uh, uh, in this regard, if existed, uh, has been uh, uh, very uh, reduced under the influence of the experience in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. When we talk about foreign policy orientation, there is a kind of difference between European states uh, 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 that largely advocate Atlanticism uh, and those who are more prone to European approach to the world affairs. Sometimes these differences are visible, sometimes almost to disappear. How much will individual state advocate for the irreplaceable role of NATO and how much some others will call on common foreign security policy of the European Union usually depends on external circumstances. When the established international order works well without serious shocks, for most Europeans, CFCP is quite sufficient framework to organize the defense. When the world stage shakes a bit, uh, especially when its epicenter is uh, in uh, uh, its unstable neighborhood, then revival of the transatlantic links uh, is obvious. Therefore, the current situation in Ukraine, especially the annexation of the Crimea, is important for understanding the issue of European defense culture. When we see the reactions of European countries, including those that in recent years have developed a meaningful relationship with Russia, there is no doubt about the existence of the European security culture. Regarding questions of relationship to the violent change of borders of sovereign states or the so-called care for the members of their own ethnic groups across national borders or the use of economic resources for the achievement of political and military interests, it is becoming clearer the division line between European and some other strategic culture. Uh, with the, the firm political will 
against such arguments, European states have integrated the principles of their cultural framework many years ago. Therefore, the Ukraine today is a place where the European security culture shows a new energy. The fact that European countries cannot accept certain behavior testifies that some firm principles on which their strategic framework uh, have been built uh, uh, are deeply rooted. Understanding of this issue is uh, crucial to bear in mind when we talk about the enlargement policy that encompassed Croatia a year ago, but is currently stop, stopped uh, at its borders. Despite demanding process of negotiations, Croatia has never showed resistance referring to the, for the fundamental European values. Croatia was accepted as a new member of the European Union since uh, it basically supports these values as a correct, inclusive, and reasonable. In this regard, the principles of the European strategic culture are proved to be more important than it seems uh, at the first sight. Sometimes they are, as I said, more uh, visible, sometimes less, but always permeated uh, through the whole range of European policies. That is why it is crucial for the candidate countries of the Southeast Europe to try to avoid a fruitless calculations on these issues. Nobody disputes uh, the right of the state to decide, for example, who will be hosted uh, in official visit. But, however, in the case of the individuals who are on the list of sanctions around which within the EU, not just easy, a consensus was reached, they have to take into account a possibility of uh, difficulties uh, in the process of negotiations or uh, ending uh, process in acceptance in the club's membership. Finally, the European Union is developing its, its strategic culture. It is a continual process that, according to its features, does not differ from the other existing and parallel processes by which this integration is progressing more than six uh, decades. The ultimate goal is not determined by either uh, content or time. However, constantly moving forward and adapting uh, to a new uh, and external circumstances would not have been possible without a wider, although not always visible, structure. And European strategic culture is a main pillar of that structure, which rests on the strength of adapted principles and flexibility that has always been proved in accepting the new solutions. One without other does not exist. Thank you very much.